thecarbonautonomy.com. Install the app. You simply give us your driver's license and that digital form of payment, and you get either the car delivered to you or you go and pick it up. That's it. Wow. I'm excited about it. Hey, hey, this is John Hope Ryan, entrepreneur and fellow builder, just like you. Thanks to the help of iHeartRadio and Traditional Financial, I'd like to present to you my brand new podcast, Building the Good Life, where each week a special friend and I will break down and unveil the mystery of how you build. So if you're ready to build like you never thought you could before, the best version of you, make sure to listen every Friday on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcast. This is the accepted talking point that all Democratic officials are going to give in this state. The organized retail theft incident and not the overall crime. That is the real issue. The root cause. John and Ken. Weekdays at 2. You took thousands of bad guys who used to live inside prison cells and now they're out here. On KFI. <laughs> Uh, 640, Bill Handel, Wednesday morning, February 16th. Uh, today at 11 o'clock, the Rams holding their rally and parade, uh, celebrating the win uh, on the Super Bowl. And uh, the family of uh, the cinematographer shot and killed on the set of uh, Rust uh, has sued Alec Baldwin individually now uh, for callous disregard. And that Alec Baldwin personally failed to take the course that's given at the beginning of a film when you're dealing with a weapon like uh, he was using. So uh, uh, the negligence part is not, is not just the shot. Uh, it goes beyond that. So lawsuits been filed, and uh, no doubt we're going to hear a lot more than that. Uh, story, another story of what COVID is about and how it has affected us, and this has to sort of do it uh, connected, but sort of not. And that is the whole issue in the pandemic, uh, how it really has scrambled up the plant-based uh, food industry. Uh, and uh, plant-based food, kind of interesting stuff, meatless meat, uh, if you were. And it's something that Neil has talked about a bunch of times, uh, our uh, fork reporter. And it, when it came out and became a thing, it really took off. I'll never forget Neil taking me to uh, Umi Burger, Umi Burger down the street here. And I had a burger, and it was, wow, I couldn't tell the difference. I mean, it bled uh, like a burger does. It tasted the texture. I mean, it was, if I didn't know it wasn't meat, I would have guessed this was meat. I mean, that, the technology has gone that far. So there was the future. Meatless meat. Uh, because of uh, the environmental impact of cows and sheep and how horrible it is for the environment and uh, in terms of uh, not only use of land, I mean, all of it, uh, what it does uh, to the climate. And so meatless meat seemed to be the answer. And oh boy, aren't we excited? Well, I don't know. I don't know. First of all, you have uh, the big chains that have now gone forward. Uh, McPlant Burger, uh, it was, I think, uh, the Whopper Burger King was the first one, first company to go across all the restaurants with a Burger King, Impossible Whopper, they called it. And so what caused meatless meat to take off? Well, when the pandemic first hit, and we were panic buying, uh, conventional meat sales rose, as you would think, uh, by 40%. Plant-based meat went up 65%. So here we are two years later, and we are pandemic fatigued. And when we look at meatless meat, we're now sending mix, mixed signals. Uh, as a matter of fact, refrigerated plant-based meat sales are down 6.6%. They're actually down. And they were explosively growing. And why is that? Why are all the major meatless meat producers saying their sales have been reduced? Uh, Morningstar Farms, Kellogg's, Beyond Meat, Maple Leaf Foods. Uh, those are three of the largest. And they're, they're shortfalls in sales. Uh, and even the Financial Times, one of the premier financial papers uh, in the world, asked, has the appetite for plant-based meat already peaked? So that doesn't sound so good for startups. Uh, that's for sure. And here is one of the biggest reasons. And that is when meatless meat first exploded, first was on the horizon, and then it exploded. What the analysts are now saying is this may have to do more uh, as it is a, a novelty than it, it has become a staple. I thought that this was going to become a staple. First of all, it tastes like meat. I mean, you, you can't tell the difference. 
I just bought a chicken patty something in the store, and it tastes like a chicken patty. KFC has chicken uh, that is uh, meatless. It even has uh, meatless feathers on the chicken, uh, plant-based feathers, which is very strange. And so people were buying it like crazy, but now it's, uh, okay, it tastes okay, and I'm going to go back to regular meat. I mean, we've been living on meat, particularly Americans, we eat uh, just a, a ton, almost literally a ton. And so we don't know yet whether it really was a novelty. Uh, in fact, I, I am in favor of plant-based meat, a lot. I think it's great. I still buy beef, and a lot of it. And if I see uh, plant-based sausages or uh, burger patties, uh, I'll, I'll buy it. I think when steaks come down and they're able to produce steaks that look like steaks and taste like steaks, that may be the turning point. Or maybe not. Maybe the thought of uh, the meatless meat, where you know it's not meat, even though it looks like meat, uh, maybe, maybe meatless duck. If it walks like a meatless duck and talks like a meatless duck, maybe it is a meatless duck. The meatless duck's quack. I don't know. Never met one. So the, the fast food giants are still on board. Uh, they're still betting. KFC launched uh, their chickens uh, made by Beyond Meat. Chipotle uh, has a pea-based uh, chorizo. Can you imagine what that's like? McDonald's has the McPlant Burger. That is still going strong. And uh, we're still eating, as I said, a whole lot more real beef and a lot more expensive beef. Because it's getting to the point where the actual manufacturer of meatless meat is, is dropping. And it really, it doesn't cost anywhere near the amount to produce when we're talking about mass production, when we're talking about we're up to scale, uh, than it does to raise a pound of beef, which is one of the most... I, I would, and I think it's fair to say it is one of the most difficult, environmentally destructive things you can do is growing a steak. And we're still eating a lot more beef. Uh, a record 224 pounds of red meat and poultry in the United States, and it went up. Even though meatless meat went up, uh, we still are eating the traditional meat. I guess we just can't get around it. Now the question is, uh, is it because it's so new? Is it because we really haven't caught on? Is it because we have a culture of beef that goes back forever? Also, there is the Adam Smith Show. 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 Adam
นะครับ
Today, I want to pick my teeth first, then brush my teeth. Good. Cool. Believe after that it was uh, 9 uh, 15? Yes. Okay, so be quiet. Let me take a nap, okay? Yeah. I will leave 9 15, okay? Yeah. Four is four is the same. 